And even if they overshoot by about maybe 30 or 60 days, my commitment is that by the end of this year, from wherever you are in the world or in the country, you should be able to access government services using technology online. That way, we can be able to drive our country in the right direction. Let me also give you, uh, I was, I saw, that company was called what, Ile, uh, 50 by 100, up Inje. Ile company upload up Inje, in Edwardini. Yani, you guys, Mumelete Mambo ya 50 by 100 Baka Rwanda. Uh, I was, <laughs> I was really surprised. Uh, so, the good news on this 50 by 100 story, the good news is that I will be launching maybe in the next two weeks or so, a new Bomayangu initiative where from wherever you are now, you can buy our low cost housing units, even from here. And you can buy uh, our affordable, let me put it, affordable housing units from wherever. And you can buy it in any part of Kenya. You don't have to buy a, a, a unit in your village or your town. You can also buy it in whatever, whichever, whichever other facility that we are doing. The good news again is that we, are, we now have um, uh, land that has been committed to us for this purpose. What we, the decision we made is, all of you know, one of the, big, uh, one of the largest uh, or one of the most difficult, what makes home ownership difficult in Kenya is the price of land. Cindy, E 50 by 100 story up. <laughs> so what we have decided is that we are going to make land available for free. And that is how, that is how a unit that was costing three, four million, we can actually make it available for one or 1.5 million. And we already have land available in 41 counties. We already have close to 4,000 acres of prime land in our big towns in Kenya. Some of it public land, some of it county, I'm saying national government land, some of it county government land, some of it in various categories. And I'm very happy that we are working with all counties um, in, in, in Kenya. So as we develop these units, be ready to be able to buy those units. And we are going to make mortgage available so that uh, you don't have to get all the money at once. You can, you can, uh, you can get money. And we go, uh, the Bomayangu uh, program, I am sure, Madam uh, Roslyn, please work with your colleague in housing so that as you go around, please let them know how they can buy the housing units back at home. We all know of the story that you send money home to your uh, brother or sister or relative, you know, and you know the story how it ends. <laughs> they go and take a photograph of uh, your neighbor's uh, how, building. They send it to you and tell you we are making progress. Send more money. <laughs> and finally, when you arrive home, there is no house. Sindio. So we want to sort out that problem for you. You don't have to uh, run into trouble with your friends or relatives. You can now trust the government of Kenya to do the building of the housing units for you and it is a sure way of owning a property way back at home. By no means, <clears throat> by no means am I discouraging you from owning property in Rwanda. Please own some property in Rwanda. And in fact, I will take up the request of Boniface that uh, instead of being allowed 300 square, square meters, 
I'm going to have a, if you had told me earlier, I would have sorted out this problem. <laughs> President Kagame is a very good friend of mine, so, and I will explain uh, to him that uh, Kenyans are good property owners. Uh, you heard me last week uh, when I had uh, um, an engagement with the American Chamber of Commerce. We had a big meeting with many companies, American companies, Amazon, Google, MasterCard, and the rest of them. And we're trying to reposition our country to not only be a tech hub, but also to increase our foreign direct investment. It is good for you to know that, yes, we can grow our country using our taxes. Yes, we can add on to that the money that we can borrow from multilateral and other bilateral uh, engagements. But much more importantly, beyond what we can raise, what we can do with our taxes, beyond what we can do with money that we borrow, we must also position ourselves so that with the private sector, we can bring in foreign direct investment. That way, we can use private sector money to grow our industries. We can use private, private sector money to position um, uh, companies that bring value to our country, that bring investment to our country, that bring manufacturing uh, opportunities to our country. That way, we benefit from, number one, jobs that come with it. Um, one of the um, um, uh, companies that we signed in last uh, Thursday was Moderna, that is going to invest $500 uh, million dollars in Kenya. We, in fact, in total, we signed in to companies that are going to bring us close to 100,000 jobs in Kenya just last Thursday. And they are going to establish the facilities that they are going to do, not using our taxes, not using our borrowed money, but they're going to use their own resources. What we get is jobs for our young people. We also get taxes from uh, whatever it is that they are doing. And of course, we position our country as a hub for manufacturing, for IT uh, technology, and many other things. And for us to effectively do that, we need you guys in the diaspora to continue to be good ambassadors for Kenya so that everybody anywhere in the world can know that if this uh, gentleman or this lady comes from Kenya and we can see her work is outstanding, Kenya must be a place that I can invest in. So you, please, I am asking you, let me repeat this again. As you do whatever it is that you're doing, just know that you're not just doing it for yourself or for your family, you're doing it for your country as well. So um, I am very happy to be uh, here this afternoon. Um, and, and I want to promise you that uh, we will continue to push the agenda for the transformation of our country. Let me tell you that we have a great country let me repeat, we have a great country. I am, I am very proud of our country, and I am confident that Kenya is going to move to a new level. Just so that you know, um, I know uh, you've said we should, we should manage issues, and, and I agree with you. Part of managing our issues is not just to be able to collect tax, but we must also look after that tax. It must not be stolen, it must not be lost, it must not be wasted. It must be used for the right thing. And part, part of the big drive that you see, and I was talking about it yesterday when I went to one of the universities, is to digitize government services and to leverage on technology to make sure that we make government efficient, we make, we make government accountable. When we deal in cash, the possibility of pilferage and theft and corruption is too big. But when we 
digitize, be able to collect our, our resources on a digital platform. Uh, it, it reduces incidences of, uh, of pilgrimage. Let me tell you that six months ago when I took over, we had only 320 government services that were digitized. It is my intention that in the next six months, all government services will be digitized and will be available online.